verses 5 through 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. The word of the Lord. God bless you. For the past three weeks, uh, we've been talking, really two weeks, but we've been talking about the gospel. And it's kind of shaken some things up because the gospel is, is offensive in a lot of ways. Um, it stirs our flesh. And so today we're going to continue that talk. Though Paul's not here, I'll be filling in for him today. And today is week three. So let me give you a little bit of a recap, especially if you haven't been here for the past two weeks or if you have been and you just want a refresher. Let me tell you where we started week one. We talked about rebellion. We stated the fact, the hard truth, that human beings, we are rebellious creatures. You know, trees, trees don't have any problems being trees. You know, a lion doesn't have any problems being a lion. But somehow humans, we have problems being humans. We rebel. And rebel in such a way that, that we've normalized rebellion. We, we set up systems in governments that help us, help us sin almost, make it okay. Because the system worked, we followed the system, then it's okay. And so that's what we talked, we hit it really hard the first week, and we said human rebellion is a thing. We are in a state of, of a deprived mind, as deprived people, not knowing really what good is. But we didn't leave it there. Last week, we talked about Jesus, really justification, that word, and really it, it's a fancy word, and all it really means is this, that through God, by Christ, he sees you as righteous, as just. He, he forgives your sins, which is great, you know, but he doesn't just stop there. He says, I'm going to give you the gift of faith. Not only that, I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. And not only that, I'm going to adopt you as my child. It's a beautiful thing. It's like a rich man forgiving someone's debt. And then instead of just saying, go, be on your way, the rich man says, come, live in my house. Let me pay for your living. Just follow me. Be a part of my household. So that's what we talked about last week justification. God sees us as just, and he adopted us as his kids. Which brings us to this, this week. This one's a little bit difficult. This is, we're going we're to be talking about basically the process, the faith walk, the walk we're all taking right now, or most of us are taking right now. And it starts with this word called sanctification. It's a big word, all right? Many of y'all have maybe heard this word. Uh, some of y'all are like, I have no idea what that is. Like, to be honest, like, when I was studying, studying all about this, like, I was even like, I'm still not sure. You know, I had to, I had to research this, so it's, it's understandable. It's a big wor word, and, and we're just going to break it down, all right? It's not going to be so scary anymore, and it basically means this, okay? It's the process of being made holy. The way we're going to say it today is it's the process of being spiritually matured. And that's the process we've entered into with our walks with Christ. So with that, here's kind of what we're going to say today. All right? God is in the process of maturing you, breaking your old ruts, your old chains, and, and allowing you to live into deeper obediences 
by his spirit. And again, that, that's a crucial thing we need to talk about as well. This is not done purely by us. This is done by the spirit, by the pouring out of his spirit. So because of that, this is what we'll conclude that certain statements are almost inappropriate. Certain statements such as, um, you know, I'm, I'm good. Or statements like, you know, I was, I was made this way. I was born a certain way. I've always been like this. And so God must like this about me. But what you'll see through the Spirit and what we'll talk about today is there's certain things in our lives, even things, sins, rebellions that we've normalized, that we don't even know about, that we've been living through day to day, that God will start pulling to the top and saying, no more. There'll be one more tra- chain he breaks. So that's where we're going today. We're going to do it in three ways, three points, okay? That first one, that God is in the process of maturing you, which is good news. It means that this isn't a one-time event. I've been to, I went to a youth rally not um, too long ago. It was about five, six years ago. And, and the church, it, I mean, this wasn't to knock the church, but the guy came up on stage, and he just basically said, you know, like, Jesus is your Savior. Accept Jesus. You know, awesome. We're like, yeah, you know, he's, he was rolling and everything. And then he basically stopped there. And he said, just, it, it's like hitting a, rec- a reset button in your life. And if you mess up, whatever, you know, just hit a reset button. But there was, there was no challenge for them to mature spiritually. He was challenging them to believe in Christ, which we talked about last week, and that's important. That's where it starts, justification. That's important. But the process, the walk, is just as important. And so what we need to know is, again, this is not a one-time event. Christianity, spirituality, whatever you want to say, is not a one-time event. You just accept Christ, you get your ticket to salvation, and live your life however you want. It's not the way this works. Instead, there's something deeper to it. And really, here's what I want to say. God is more invested in your life than you are. Let me say that one more time because it needs to hit a little bit. God is more invested in your life, in your walk, than you are. What that necessarily means is on your best day, where you, you got the checklist going, man, you just, you were feeling the Spirit, it was awesome, you were obeying Christ, it was great. On that day, and also on your worst day, where it feels like you just cannot get it together. You're finding disobedience after disobedience after disobedience. On both days, God is still patient. And God is still working. Beautiful description that was uh, given to me. You know, it talked about, um, we were talking in college study last week about this word um, hypocrite. And really, all it, the root of it is to say like an actor. You know, someone who gets up on stage and acts before an audience. And so we ta- started talking about this word, and it was, it was cool because the, the guy I was reading, he, he started talking about this, this actor, and he's like, you know, it, it's great, you know, it's great to perform to the crowd, but Jesus speaks against it. And really, you always got to wonder about the man behind the curtain, the one that doesn't get any credit most of the time, the ones that make the lights go, the curtains open, the sound on hits the cues, that's God. God is that behind-the-scene person investing into your life. As you are a witness on the stage to a world, God is behind the scenes working in your life, saying, I got this. Maybe a light goes out every once in a while, and we fall on our knees, and we're like, oh, woe is me. A light when the, the light's not shining, and we, we lose our focus, but we sometimes forget about the man behind the curtain. And just like an actor on stage should know, the guy behind the curtain is often the most invested person in the show. That's God. That's God in your life. So just know that, okay? God is trying to mature you, and he is heavily invested in doing so. Okay? So that's our first point. The next thing, second point we need to talk about. 
this, this maturing, this is kind of the difficult one. It, it doesn't happen by your willpower. It doesn't happen with you. This maturing happens by God pouring out his spirit as a gift to you. There's two things we need to hold in the tension with that, okay? Because there, there's one tension, there's this side, and it's the person who, you know, uh, WWJD, what would Jesus do? So I'm going to look at my gospel, I'm going to follow to a T what Jesus does. That's not necessarily evil, but it's Pharisaic in a lot of ways. It's legalizing Jesus, saying this is exactly what I need to do. Oh, check that one off. Whew, I'm good. And it becomes more about what you do rather than what God is doing. Fair sake. So that's one tension. But then on the other side, you, again, you have the, the one-time event. The, I got my ticket to salvation. We're good. I'm going to live my life how long I want. And that's, that's also the other extreme that we have to stray away from. God does not call us to be lukewarm, right? I will spew you out of my mouth. He does not call us to be lukewarm. So you have to hold those two things in tension. And you basically hold them in tension with the Spirit by saying that it is by God's doing, not my own, that I'm able to find obedience. That's the key. And so phrases like WWJD, they're nice, but table at. And instead say, what is the Spirit doing in me right now? How is the Spirit doing? calling me to move and lead and walk? That is the question we need to be asking. And through that Spirit, the Spirit allows us to enter into deeper levels of obedience. Reflect with me real quick. Think of that first time you really heard about Jesus. That first time you're like, okay, there's something about this. I don't know, it's, it's weird. I, maybe I've never... Maybe you grew up in a pew all your life and you're like, yeah, this is just something I've always heard. Or maybe you're like, I've only been a Christian for two years. Either way, think about that first time. Reflect. And then think about where you are right now. There should be a difference. You should be dug out a little bit more. You see, because what the Spirit does, what God does through His Spirit, is when you accept that gift of faith, you say yes. Yes to Christ. You know, he'll give you like a trickle of the Spirit. Like, handle this. Usually when we pray over people and we say, you know, um, God, gift them with the Holy Spirit, they accept Christ. We usually, it always is on our heart to say, you know, I truly believe God is going to put something in front of you soon. Like 30 minutes or so. I don't even know the time frame. He's going to put something in front of you to obey. Obey it. Whether it's driving down the road and you see something, or whether it's a name pops in your head and you feel like you have to call that person, obey that thing inside of you. Just obey it. And after time, you obey something, and God digs you out a little bit deeper, and he fills you back with his spirit. And then he digs you deeper and deeper and deeper until you realize that once you had a trickle, but now if you have a whole lake. It's easier to walk in the Spirit. Because of that, we have to kind of um, put that into tension a little bit more, okay? So God continues to dig you out in deeper levels, okay? Filling you up with his Holy Spirit. So the last thing we need to talk about is what's appropriate and what's not, not appropriate. First, let's start here. First, let's say this. The best thing you can do as followers of Christ, the best thing you can do is simply not resist the Spirit's work in you. Let me say that a little bit differently, okay? As a believer, the best thing you can do is offer the least amount of resistance to what the Spirit is doing. I'm guilty of this. Maybe, maybe, um, Y'all have been in that train, that, that place where, you know, you're, I don't know, some, something's in front of you. You just feel it on your heart. You're like, I need to, like, you see somebody, you need to, like, help them out. Or something's in front, I need to call this person. Or I don't need to do this. Or something's on you, and it's like, 
tearing at you. Something inside of you is like, I don't, or I, I do need to do this. And instead of obeying that, you obey the flesh and we say, eh, whatever. This is what I want. This is who I am. My friends, that's common. As our scripture said today, there's this tension between us, inside of us. When we accept Christ, when we accept the Spirit, there's almost this, this war waging within us. Between our spirit, kind of like trying to tackle our, our flesh, and our flesh is saying, no, I still have a voice. I always had a voice in his life, but now what? I'm, no, I have the voice in the spirit saying, no, God. And slowly the spirit is taking the flesh. And so there's this tension this tension. So usually there will be circumstances that arise. Obey or disobey. Scripture says that are you, are you going to live by the flesh, by what your flesh wants, or are you going to live by the Spirit? People of the Spirit, what? Live by the Spirit. People of the flesh live by the flesh. So what will it be? There's that path, okay? The third thing we need to talk about, last thing, by resisting the Spirit, okay, allowing, allowing the flesh to overtake, you're allowing your rebellion to continue. You're allowing, you're allowing your Spirit's voice to be deadened inside of you. You're allowing statements to have meaning in your life like, this is this is the way I am. This is who I, this, I was, I was born like this. Me, I was an introvert. I would never get up in front of crowds. This is crazy to myself about 10 years ago. You know, I'd be passing out and just, it'd be crazy, okay? So I could have used that and said, you know what? That, this is who I am. This is the personality God gave me. Yeah, he's calling me to ministry, but this is a personality God gave me. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna continue living that way. But the Spirit kept knocking and saying, no. No. Do it. But, but God, this is who I, you made me this way, right? Why would you, why would you make me a certain way and then want me to live different? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. No. Do this. And he kept digging me out. Digging me out. Is my testimony not witness enough? My friends, realize this. God is truly invested in you. God is in the process of maturing you as a Christian, as a believer. So remember, the best thing you can do is not, is not to go out and make a bunch of checklists of how to be a Christian. It's not to stand on the sidelines, be lukewarm, or do nothing at all. It's to simply not resist what the Spirit is doing. And it starts with simply prayer in those moments when you feel that thing inside of you. Simply stepping back and saying, God, I know you want me to obey. It's going to be hard. But you know what, Lord? Right now, I don't resist you. Your will, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life. My friends, that sanctification, that is how God matures you. So I beg of you, as I plead with myself, don't resist what the Spirit is doing in your life. Find moments of obedience in your life today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you so much. We thank you for, for allowing us your, your gift of your spirit. We, we thank you for allowing us um, to have moments of obedience. We thank you that you are so invested in our lives, God, even more so than we are. You're working so heavily behind the scenes. 
each day, God, you're aligning our flesh. You're aligning everything under you through Christ. God, we pray right now. I speak to each and every heart in this room. We pray right now that we, Father, do not resist you. Lord, we say come and reign in this place. We say come and reign in our households. We say come and reign in our personal lives, in our bodies. Bind up the strong man. Bind up the, the, the sins, those things that, that are, are making the voices, the, the voice of your spirit deadened, deafened. Instead, God, let your spirit speak so loudly in our heads. May it pull so, so much on our hearts that it is so uncomfortable for us not to obey than it is to obey, Father. In Jesus' name, I speak to the hearts in this room, God. We ask for a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. As this is a moment where you've attempted to dig us out even more. As we have come corporately to worship you. God, this in and of itself, you have called us to do. So we are showing obedience through your Spirit, only by your Spirit, God. And so we ask that you would fill us. You would fill this place in Jesus' name. Double that Spirit in each of our lives. Let us walk with you actively. And God, we also confess that we have not done the best job. We have not hallowed your name. We confess this week that we have found moments of true disobedience, living in sin. But God, we know that you also give forgiveness and grace. You've called us children. So we ask for that and we thank you for that as we know it's given. In Jesus' name, we, we just thank you for how well you work. Thank you for how you provide to each and every one of us. And we want to thank you for the blessings of today. Not too much that we may become greedy and not too little that we may steal, but just enough for today, Father, our daily bread. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.